She had lost everything, her home, her position, her books, her salary, her pension, even her native language. She had been cut off from her work just at the time when she was leading the field and was on the brink of a major scientific discovery. لم تكترث ليزا بالحرمان الذي عانته كان بالها لا يزال مشغولا بالفيزياء والمدهش أنها تمكنت وهاهن من التعاون عبر الرسائل I hope my dear Otto that after 30 years of work together and friendship in the institute that at least the possibility remains that you tell me as much as you can about what is happening back there Lisa was invited by an old student friend to spend Christmas on the west coast of Sweden. Her nephew, Otto Robert Frisch, who was also a physicist, came to join her there. Aunt? 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 Lisa, how are you, my dear? Merry Christmas, Aunt. <laughs> I need your help. Come on, let's go out. <laughs> but I was hoping you'd help me. في برلين كان هاهن يحقق نتائج غريبة. لم يجد ما يؤكد الاعتقاد بأن قصف نواة اليورانيوم بالنيترونات يؤدي إلى زيادة حجمها. في الواقع بدت تجاربه وكأنها تلوثت بالراديوم الذرة الأصغر حجما. كان بحاجة إلى خبرة مايتنر بالتحليل وعن بعد شعرت مايتنر بأن شيئا مختلفا تماما يحدث في تجاربهما هان و ستراسمان يجدون بعض رسالات مع اليورانيوم بالضبط؟ كبير من قبل قبل هان قال لي أنهم يجدون رسالات مع اليورانيوم نحن 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 I urged Han to check again. It couldn't be radium. And now he writes to me and tells me that it's not radium, it's barium. But that's even smaller. Exactly. Han is sure that it's another error, but I don't know anymore. It is at least possible that barium is being produced. So Han still needs you to interpret the data. It is my work too, you know. Exactly. Well... I can't be there, can I? Come on, let's walk. Surely he's made a mistake, hasn't he? He hasn't done what you told him to. Oh, my darling Robert, he may not be a brilliant theorist, but he's too good a chemist to get this wrong. If you imagine a drop of water, a big drop, it's unstable, on the verge of breaking apart. It turns out that a big nucleus like uranium is just like that. Now for four years, Meitner and Hahn and all other physicists had thought that if you pump more neutrons into this nucleus, it'll just get bigger and heavier. But suddenly, Meitner and Frisch, out in the midday snow, realized that this nucleus might just get so big that it would split in two. If the nucleus is so big that it has trouble staying together, then couldn't just a little tiny jog from a neutron... And yes, but if the nucleus did split, the two halves would fly apart with a huge amount of energy. Where's that energy going to come from? How much? Energy. Well, we worked out that the mutual repulsion between two nuclei would generate about 200 million electron volts. But something has to supply that energy. Wait, let me do a packing friction calculation. The two nuclei 
are lighter than the original nucleus of the uranium by about one-fifth of a proton in mass. What? So some mass has been lost. Einstein's equals mc squared. If we multiply the loss mass by the speed of light squared, we get... ...200 million electron volts. He split the atom. No, no, no. You've split the atom. It was an amazing discovery. Of course, in the laboratory, we're talking about tiny amounts of uranium and correspondingly tiny amounts of energy. But the point is that the amount of energy released was relatively large and that came from the mass of the uranium itself. The energy released was entirely consistent with Einstein's equation E equals mc squared. نشر فريش ومايتنر اكتشافهما الذي سمياه الانشطار النووي لكن الخيانة كانت في انتظارهما اذ تعرض اوتا هاهن لضغط من النظام النزيج لاستثناء زميلته في البحث لعدم يقينهم من ولائها وحده حصل على جائزة نوبل لعام اربعة واربعين على الاكتشاف. ولم يكد يذكر دور مايتنر الهام في الكلمة التي ألقاها وبعد الحرب زعم هاهن أنه هو وليس مايتنر من اكتشف الانشطار النووي Now I want to write something personal which disturbs me and which I ask you to read with more than 40 year friendship in mind and with the desire to understand me I am now referred to as Hans, long-time co-worker. How would you feel if you were only characterized as the long-time co-worker of me? After the last 15 years, which I wouldn't wish on any good friend, shall my scientific past also be taken from me? Is that fair? 